So today's episode is going to be pretty cool. Before we get started, we need to unbox a couple packages. So let's just do this real quick here. Boom. We'll, uh, I'm pretty excited about this. We'll get more into this in a second. Um, I'll, I'll explain everything, but first let's just get opened. Okay, the evolution of jazz drumming. Oh, this is sweet! Wow. Again, I'll explain this in a minute here. And then, the big box. Okay, so we have quite a few things in this packet. First thing first, my drumstick. I buy sticks in bulk. These are, well, they're kind of crappy sticks. The whole reason is there's something absolutely therapeutic about putting on headphones and just banging a drum, like really playing a drum set hard and just shredding through a pair of sticks over the course of an hour or so. And afterwards, you feel like you've just gone for a run and it's really, ex drumsticks, I didn't know if you know this, but a nice pair of drumsticks is like 10 bucks. This is uh, 24 pairs for 25 bucks. So uh, it's a dollar a pair, way better, and it basically lets me do that, and I was running low. So time, it was time to get some of these. And then, have several method books for playing drums, and again, I'll go into these in a second. They're all, meant to do something. And then I have a sizzle. I, I bought a sizzle and I'll go into that later. Again, we're gonna explain everything I got here. And then the final thing in the box. And this is the first thing I'm gonna explain. So this is called an eargasm earplug. And it comes with this little, and it comes with this little case that will go on my keychain, which is awesome because I do always carry keychain that stores these earplugs. Now these earplugs are different than any other earplugs. The point of these earplugs is to keep things flat even though you have earplugs in which is not totally possible first of all I just want to say that and I'm gonna explain this. The idea and this is true is that The whole idea is that different kinds of earplugs um, do different things, and that's totally true. Different kinds of head protection do totally different things. If we were to say this kind of earplug is red, this kind of earplug, in case you can't tell, this is a custom molded earplug, and then this kind of earplug is black, and we were to make an EQ graph. An EQ graph is just a fancy way of saying, of, of basically talking about which frequencies are loudest. If this line right here, if this line, don't move, if that line right there is where natural hearing was, then this kind of headphone right here would be a graph kind of like that. This kind of headphone would be a graph um, it's probably more like that. And then this kind of headphone or, or ear, ear protection would be a graph that'd be more like, uh, more, I don't know, maybe more like that. This isn't precise, this varies. And then this is where your hearing would be if, um, if you didn't wear any ear protection. The goal of these right here the goal of this and these kind of headphones is entirely to take this line and just drop it. The whole idea is to simply take this line and drop it and keep it exactly the same. And the reason that this is so important is because um, you, will, you will hurt your ears drumming. In fact, I think I have hurt my ears drumming because anytime I'm in band or in an environment that even has somewhat loud audio, 
somewhat loud sounds. I, I think I have what's called tinnitus, which is where you'll experience a ring, like a distortion if things get too loud. And basically until your ears calm down, you will continue to feel this weird like, it's almost like a static, but not, it is a sound, but also a feeling, like a static feeling in your ears. Anytime in, I'm in band, what in the past I've done is I've taken my headphones that are always in my bag, I've taken those headphones and just covered my ears. The problem with that is that, the problem with that is that it completely changes the sound. I'm not really able to hear myself, and um, well, it, it just doesn't work. These are supposed to help that. And also, while you're playing drums, if you use any kind of ear plug, it's, it's gonna completely change the sound and give you a false sense of what's loudest. For example, when using those headphones, you really can't hear how loud and how long the crash and the cymbals go on. You can't really hear that resonance. Which is a problem because I think I sound really good, but in reality I'm playing things too loud. So these right here are apparently the best earplugs in the world. I'm gonna try them out real quick. Whoa, that is some ear pressure. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Mm. Wow. It says that it's only minus 12 decibels, but that really lowers the volume a lot. Wow. The, these kind of earplugs, man. That's crazy. It's like I'm I'm going to be very very interested. Oh, I was talking loud. I'm going to be very interested to see how this works with drums. I'm going to tell you guys what I think. This sound though. Isn't that just horrible? Oh, but these just drop right into this container. And I need to make sure I don't lose these cuz these are really expensive and so I can just always have earplugs on me. In case you're wondering, maybe you watch my EDC video and you know that I always have earplugs in, on me. Well, I've actually changed my EDC recently and I'm planning on making a video talking about that in a little bit. Yeah, this is super cool, guys. So now I have that on there. Now, maybe you watched my shooting at the gun range video and I had these earplugs and I had these earplugs right here. The guy gave me those. These are perfect and they're actually made for shooting um, because it, it, the pitch that a gun makes, this helps with that pitch. So if you were to wear these, you experience some ear fatigue at a concert where there's a lot of bass because they don't do such a good job of eliminating bass sound. So in case you didn't realize, this episode, this, this production, this show, today's vlog is entirely based around drumming. Drumming. And in a little bit here, we're going to go up to the school and do some drumming. And I'm going to show you what these books and these tools and these things are for. And I'm gonna explain everything in the best way I, I can because it's really hard to capture practice in a vlog because it, practice is either like you're 100% in or you're not and vlog is either like you're 50% in or you're not. But I'm gonna try my best to at least capture some stuff and show you guys some stuff. So in about an hour I'm gonna head up to the school and I will have about two hours to practice. So. Yeah, until then, well, I'll just put my hand on the camera and we'll fast forward. All right, and now we're here. So the first matter of business is this guy. This is called a cymbal sizzle, okay? And you're gonna get to hear what this does. The idea is that you have two what you call ride cymbals. These cymbals are different than crash cymbals. They're larger, they're meant to make um, a resonant pinging sound. You've heard them before, I'm sure of it. And the idea is when you have two of them, you take one of those symbols and put this on it. Can you see that? Put this on it. What you then need to do is cut the sizzle so that it's just the exact right length for your ride symbols that you use. So there it is. And now, and I'm gonna usually put uh, the sizzle on your worst ride symbol. Do you hear that sound? Beautiful. The idea here is that you'll be playing along and you can hit this symbol as a different kind of crash. What the, cra what the crashes do, they're meant to be placed, they're meant to be placed on markers of a song. So at the beginning, for example, I mean, even in rock, like,
that example, but you put that there. So for jazz. And it makes this longer sizzling sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice for a little bit. And then I'll use the last 30 minutes or so to explain these books explain all the stuff back here and just explain. You guys are going to learn a little bit today. Well, I can no longer feel my legs. I've been practicing for about an hour and a half, and I have to get to class in about 20 minutes, so I figured I would kind of talk about some stuff that I said I was gonna talk about. First of all, the sizzle is awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Okay, let's talk about some of these books. The first one is called The Evolution of Jazz Drumming. Basically what this, this book talks about, this book talks about historically what happened with drumming and drumming has evolved and we've we've gotten all sorts of nuances and, and new things so um, what's really cool about this book is that in the back there's these two discs throughout the whole entire book it'll give you a uh, history on someone this one is Gus Johnson and so now you have a song here that you can play along with that is basically allows you to listen to his style and learn from it with some music that they've written I'm super excited to work through this stuff um, this is just kinda gonna be fun learn some history um, all this other stuff is basically gonna be ridiculously hard all right, next book is called Four-Way Coordination. The idea of this book is that you have four limbs and you implement all of these limbs while you're playing the drums. You have your right foot, you have your left foot, you have your right hand, and you have your left hand. So basically in this book, it starts out easy, but then in the end, let's see, let's get somewhere where it's not triplets. The, the idea of this for swing, so I'm, is for swing, so I'm glad there's a lot of triplets. But um, on the staff line, it'll, it'll give you left foot, right foot, left foot, left hand, right hand, and you have to play um, along exactly what it's asking. The entire idea of this book is, develop, is to develop neurological pathways that allow your limbs to function on their own, and you basically have to learn each and every little idea. So for example, with this song that I've been working on here, and by the way, I meant to show you guys uh, a little bit of this, so let me play some for you. There's a hard part. Crazy stuff. Um, the idea, there's these triplet hits, or not, not necessarily triplet. It comes off as a triplet with how fast it's going. But there, there are these um, dotted quarter note hits, so three eighth notes. That's what a dotted quarter note is, three eighth notes. So in jazz, you're constantly doing this right here on beats two and four. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the idea is with that you're doing two and four. With right foot, you're doing the dotted quarter note. So. So those end up not lining up. This is four eighth notes, this is three eighth notes. So they, they are all weird. And with the right hand, you're matched with the right foot, so. But then this is where things get kind of tricky. Then you throw in the left hand, which goes. And I don't know 
I don't know exactly how that seems to someone who doesn't do drums, someone who might not have any musical knowledge. That took me about two hours to get that, and now that I have it, I can do all sorts, like I can do it on command, easy. And it's not muscle memory because um, if I were to come back to this in 30 years, I'll, I'd still be able to do it. It's a neurological pathway. You've opened up your mind. Ba basically, your mind is sending signals to each of those four limbs. And the more you do it, the easier it is for your mind to send those signals. I'm looking into also getting another book that basically goes into four-way coordination, so your four limbs, but then permutating those and all these exercises to permutate. Permutation means that you move one of the elements one-eighth note to the side or one-sixteenth note to the side. So in this example, that happens all throughout this song. And each time I had to play a permutation or a slight modification, I was able to much easier than the first time I tried. An example of that, an example of that would be, so before I was putting the first right hand note on the downbeat, so. I was doing that. But what if I were to put the first right hand on the third eighth note? So it'd be, and since this is on the third eighth note too, they go together at the beginning, so. Anyways, I know that's pretty nerdy, but I just wanted to share it with you since you guys do come to this channel to see what my life is like. Or maybe for some of you to leave hate, I don't know. And then there's this book. This is called Buddy Rich's Snare Drum Rudiments. Buddy Rich is like my favorite drummer of all time. And not necessarily because of how his drumming was. His drumming was amazing, but he was with the Count Basie band. And, oh, legend. And what he goes over, well, well, this book isn't by him. It's actually by someone who was closely affiliated with him. I believe Henry Adler um, was the teacher of Buddy Rich. I might be getting that wrong. But uh, it uh, goes through, of course, Buddy Rich highly endorses the traditional grip in the left hand. I don't really care for it much. But um, this goes through the 26 rudiments? The f no, the 40 rudiments. This goes through the 40 rudiments, and then in the end, it also gives you all these military uh, rudiments, which are ridiculous. Yeah, so this one's called the three camps. Look at this. Even if, like for me, that's just like, what the crap? Um, that's so, that's crazy, so. This book's pretty cool. I'm excited to work through some of this stuff and try to transfer it onto the drum kit. And then the final book is a book that's going to remain in my dorm. And this book is simply called Syncopation. This book basically works on getting your right and left hands to develop neurological pathways. So forget your right and left feet. This one is basically just right hand and left hand. And it starts from very easy. I could probably sight read let's see I could probably sight read mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's just say here I could probably sight read the first 17 pages perfectly um, but I'm gonna work through this entire book and learn all of these syncopations because these will translate onto the drum set really well and really nicely for jazz as well and it just helps kind of think of your brain as being blocked up. Your brain has all these dams in it. And you have to break through those dams to allow the, the water and the rhythms to uh, kind of flow. And so this is going to help. I can do this on a practice pad at home. So that's why I'm going to keep this book at home. So yeah, like I was saying, this book's going to stay at home. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to talk? Oh yeah. What do I think of these ear plugs? Focus. I can do it. Come on. You can do it. Fo okay, yeah. What do I think of these earplugs? They're good. They're definitely good. And I, I do have good enough hearing that I, I would be able to notice a difference. I do think it still changes the sound a little bit. I do. Because when I would take my plugs out right after playing something, I'd kind of be surprised at how much the cymbals were still ringing. And I, I couldn't hear that at all. Mixing playing with earplugs like this with playing without any earplugs but playing gently to kind of understand how, how loud everything is, is definitely gonna be what I'm doing. 
I'd suggest doing that as well. They actually block out more sound than those do when I just put those on and like use a metronome or something. So yeah, I was kind of surprised by that, but as I continue to use the earplugs, I will continue to let you guys know what I think about them. I don't really have anything to say about these sticks because I mean, I've bought a 48 pack of them before, so they're, they're crappy sticks, but it works. And what's up guys, it's a lot later, actually like two weeks later, so I figured I'd give you an update on exactly what I think of the earplugs because I have I have a different opinion about them now that I've used them like maybe 20 times for playing trombone and playing drums and doing other things when the speakers were too loud, um, when I was listening to a famous speaker. I've used them more, so I have more knowledge about them. And this also goes to show you that I'm like editing videos way past the date that I shot them. And I'll also explain that. Anyways, the earplugs are a lot better, are a lot better than I gave them credit for being. Um, and that you watched just a minute ago. I, I realized that they basically have two amounts of cancellation. Um, when you shove them really, when you shove them really far into your ears, they like fully seal. And I think your ears are actually like squeezing the like little piece inside and just shutting off all sound. And that's not what they're designed to do. If you look at them, there's little holes that allow sound to go through. So if you put and ideally what happens is you push them in pretty good and you get that seal and then you kind of move your jaw and the air starts flowing and you'll feel like that pressure release so it doesn't really feel like there's any pressure in your ear and there doesn't really feel like there's an earplug in your ear but it also protects your hearing at the same time it lowers the volume and i'd say accurately it does lower the volume by about 12 decibels so they kind of like dead on hit the target there um could have been cool for them to include instructions explaining that that it isn't supposed to feel like a full seal because it it doesn't it's not supposed to i'm getting good amount of hearing reduction with it not feeling like they're sealing the traditional like earbud seal it doesn't feel like that at all i mean it can if you shove it in really far and at that point i'd say it's canceling just as good as any other earplug out there but it works really well i i play with like i said i use it for trombone for drumming and it does alter the sound a little bit, and I think that's because your ears naturally resonate at like two and three hertz. So you're gonna lose some mid, you're gonna lose some mid overtones. Yeah, you, I mean, it, it is gonna sound a little different because there's something in your ear and your ear is an instrument. Things resonate inside of your ears. But I, I think it's a great investment, it really is. So if you're thinking about buying them, I'd say, I mean, go ahead. If you're looking for high fidelity earplugs, they're good, I like them. Now about what's been going on with my life. Okay, I have about four videos that I have filmed and I haven't edited. I need to edit them and upload them and I'm gonna do that before I film any more videos. Um, but after I got done filming those four vlogs, I went on tour and I started uploading videos that I had stockpiled. You know, the, the do not watch this video, all sorts of videos that I had just stockpiled. And I was just planning on saving them for a rainy day. And then I got back from a uh, band tour, which I told you guys about in, in yesterday's vlog, and I got deathly sick. I've never had this before, but I was having, well, Let's just say, when you were a kid, you used to write in a diary, and if you were to pronounce that word wrong, that's what I would have. And I was having to write in my diary every 30 minutes or so for about three days. <laughs> three days! And um, I had to take a break from school, from sleeping, <laughs> from really doing anything and I'm just now like just now on Saturday I'll give you the date since we never know when Nathan's uploading on the 15th I'm just now getting over it this has been like the worst sickness of my life you know if you write in your diary enough things get a little tender and sometimes your hand will get so cramped from writing in your diary that you have to instead of doing things the traditional way you have to 
rinse your hand in the shower. Okay, you guys know I'm talking about diarrhea, right? Okay, yeah. It was bad, and it still is bad. I was, ugh, I don't even really want to think about it. But, I flushed out my system. In case you guys can't tell, I lost like 10 or 15 pounds, but not in a good way. That's not, I mean, you don't want to lose weight like that. But my system is pretty flushed out at this point. And I'm still really tired. Like, I've been sleeping since I've been able to sleep, which was a recent development. Actually, last night was the second night I've been able to sleep. I've been sleeping about 16 hours a day, and I'm finally, like, back. I'm finally back to being, like, just about good to go. And my body is just about good to go, too, although I'll still have to keep treating it gentle and eating bananas, doing things like that. All that to say, this was a really long vlog, and I'm wrapping it up two weeks later, maybe longer, but I haven't forgotten about you guys, although I really kind of did forget about you guys for a couple weeks, just uploading videos I had already put on YouTube and already tagged and everything, um, but I, I will not forget about you guys. I'm going to keep staying strong, even if just you 440 people out there, even if you are the only ones to become Lavalle jeans, and you don't tell your friends, and... I'm not able to grow and keep getting bigger because I'm going to keep posting. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep making videos even if all I can do is like this right here. If I can just hold a camera in front of my face for 10 minutes a day. Like, you know, there's all this anxiety in my head about this summer because I'm going to be doing like even more than I am now. Um, I mean, I'll be doing less things, but each thing will need to occupy more of my day. Like working a full-time job, an overtime job, a summer job. Um, and still trying to do YouTube. I mean, even if I can just take my camera out for 10 minutes and tell you like a funny story that happened from work and like update you guys on how Brie is and just talk to you guys, like I'm gonna keep doing it. Even if this summer is going to be, I mean, if I gotta take a little hit in video quality, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep uploading for you guys. I'm gonna keep this family going. And I, I appreciate those of you who have been riding along and supporting and following. I really do. So, uh, sorry for the long episode for those of you who don't like long episodes. Um, although you probably didn't make it this far anyways. And for those of you who did, you're like the 5% maybe, the 1%, I don't know. And yeah, send me some positive vibes to keep getting better. So, Lavalle, always improve, okay? Even when you're low energy and you've been having to write in your diary a lot, always improve and um, you keep killing it and I'm gonna keep killing it too peace